Sketch the graph of f. Step 1, we'll determine the domain. Notice that this is a rational function, so we need to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve to find the restrictions. We can see that x cannot be negative 2, so our domain is negative infinity to negative 2 union negative 2 to infinity. Step 2 will find intercepts. To find the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0, or in this case, we can simply set the numerator equal to 0, since it's a rational function. Solve for x. We get x equals negative 3 halves. So our x-intercept, negative 3 halves, 0. To find the y-intercept, we make x 0. So we have 2 times 0 plus 3 over 0 plus 2. This gives us 3 halves. Or 0, 3 over 2. Step 3. We will determine symmetry. We'll start by finding f of negative x. Replace all of the x's with negative x. This gives us negative 2x plus 3 over negative x plus 2. Notice that this is not f of x. So we can say that this is not even, which means it's not symmetric about the y-axis. Next, we'll check to see if it is odd. So we'll take this function, f of negative x, and factor out a negative 1. I'm going to pull it out of the numerator. And we can see that this is not negative f of x. So f of negative x is not negative f of x, which means it's not odd. That tells us we do not have symmetry about the origin, so this step doesn't help us in our graphing process. Step four, we're looking for asymptotes. For the vertical asymptote, we can set the denominator equal to zero, which we did earlier. x plus two equals zero. x equals negative two is a vertical asymptote. And for the horizontal asymptote, we can see that the degrees of the numerator and denominator are both the same. So we'll take a ratio of those leading coefficients and we get y equals 2 is the horizontal asymptote. In step 5, we'll take the first derivative. Using the quotient rule, we'll get x plus 2 times 2 minus 2x plus 3 times 1 divided by x plus 2 squared. If we simplify this, we'll get 1 divided by x plus 2 squared. We want to set this equal to 0 and solve Solving does nothing for us in this case, so we'll also look to see where the first derivative is undefined. And it looks like the first derivative is undefined when x is equal to negative 2. So we'll use that value to break up our interval. 
I'm going to be to the left of negative 2 and to the right of negative 2. We'll look at f prime. And what that's going to tell us about f. So we positive in both intervals, which means f is increasing on both intervals. And since there's no change from increasing to decreasing, step six, we can say that we have no local maxes or mins. In step seven, we will look for the second derivative. Second derivative, we get negative two x plus two to the negative third power. So we want to set the second derivative equal to zero, and it might be easier if we write it as a fraction to see what's gonna happen. Set that equal to zero, cross multiply and x goes away, you end up with zero equals negative two, which is not a true statement. So we can't use that, but we can look to see where the second derivative is undefined, and that will be where the denominator equals zero or where x equals negative two. So we'll use x equals negative two to set up our table. Going to be to the left of negative 2 and to the right of negative 2. Then we'll put the second derivative in here. And what that tells us about f. So to the left of negative 2, the second derivative is going to be positive. And the second derivative will be negative in the interval from negative 2 to positive infinity. That tells us f is concave up to the left of negative 2 and concave down to the right of negative 2. Now it looks like we have a change in concavity here. And graphically, it will change concavity, but we're not going to consider this an inflection point because x cannot equal negative 2. There's an asymptote there. So at x equals negative 2, there will be a change in concavity, but again, it will not be considered an inflection point. Finally, in our last step, we'll sketch what we know. We have an x-intercept at negative 3 halves. We have a y-intercept at positive 3 halves. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. We also know that y equals 2 is a horizontal asymptote. We know that the graph is increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, and also increasing from negative 2 to infinity. So it looks like we know this piece. We also know that it's concave down on this interval. So we're missing some points in this region of the graph, but we know a little bit about it. We know that we have some asymptotes. We know that it's increasing and we also know that it is concave up so we can make a sketch here we know that it's going to look like this if we wanted to be more accurate we could pick some points say negative three plug it into f and see what the actual y value is or we could go to the calculator and get a sketch but for now we're just going for a very rough sketch if we wanted to be more accurate we could do that